Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Martin, a Chief of Pediatric Dentistry at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh of UPMC. And I'm here to speak with you today about the how-tos and whys of oral health care. This brushing technique is very simple. What it involves is making a small circular motion near the gum line of each tooth, and then every so often making a little bit of a sweep away from the gum line. We work the toothbrush from the back of the mouth towards the front, brushing in small circles and sweeping downwards or upwards away from the gum line. We do this for two reasons. First, because the small circular motion is very gentle on the gums. And secondly, the, small, the sweeping motion helps clear the plaque or sticky film off of the teeth and into the mouth where it can be rinsed away. We work from one side around to the front then following across the front teeth to the other side, working towards the back of the mouth. Here we do the same motion, small circular with a sweep, cleaning the plaque off of the teeth with the soft toothbrush. We use a soft toothbrush because we don't want to wear away the teeth. You can check how soft a toothbrush is by simply running your fingers across a toothbrush it should feel very soft. If the, tooth, if the toothbrush feels very stiff, you may have a denture toothbrush, which we certainly don't want to brush, use to brush. After cleaning the outside surfaces of the teeth, we open the mouth, clean the chewing surfaces of the teeth with a back and forth sawing motion, and then we do the inside of the teeth, top and bottom, with the same small circular and sweeping motions, working our way all the way around the mouth. During this process, it's important that we have an adequate, but not too much toothpaste on the toothbrush. We recommend using a amount of toothpaste about the size of a pea. This will prevent unnecessary foaming and gagging while still providing an adequate amount of fluoride to strengthen and clean the teeth. A word about flossing. We floss our teeth to clean them in areas where the brush simply doesn't reach. Specifically, in between the teeth and also behind the teeth. I'll open the mouth here to show you the basics of how to floss your teeth and then we'll speak in a moment about how to floss someone else's teeth. Flossing essentially involves taking a piece of floss or a small string there are a number of different varieties, waxed and unwaxed, floxes made of Gore-Tex, and all kinds of fancy materials. What's important is that the floss that you choose is able to pass in between the contacts of the teeth, or in between the teeth. So what we do, it's relatively straightforward. You take the piece of floss, and you're going to use the floss and push the floss down in between the teeth and slide it against the side of the one tooth and then against the side of the other tooth. When you're finished, you have two options. You can either pull the floss through, if it's regular floss, or if you're using one of these flossers, simply bring it back up through the contact point in between the teeth. You might hear a little click or sound whenever this occurs, and then go ahead and move on to the next tooth. The key to know which teeth to floss is that if the, if the, the contact or the area in between the teeth is tight enough to ha give a little resistance to put the floss in between, the teeth should be flossed. Only if you can see gum tissue clearly in between the teeth, such that a toothbrush bristle could be able to go in between and clean the space, do you not need to floss those teeth. The old adage, you only need to floss the teeth that you want to keep, is very true. Flossing, in addition to removing plaque and debris in between the teeth, also helps keep the gum tissue healthy. Finally, floss can reach behind the last teeth and keep that area of the mouth clean where it's virtually impossible for the bristles of a toothbrush to go. Flossing your own teeth we recommend and also someone else's teeth we recommend doing it in a stepwise fashion. Start in one area of the mouth, work your way all the way around, same thing in the top of the mouth, and then finish. Small flossers like this can actually be washed and reused with a little bit of hand soap in between usages. Regular floss that comes out of a floss dispenser is recommended to go ahead and dispose of after each use. These flossers can last for several flossings for young children 
However, if the contacts on the teeth are very tight and you notice the floss start to fray, it's best to go ahead and dispose of it and use a new one. It's important to take care of your tongue as well as taking care of your teeth. It's recommended that at each toothbrushing session, you also brush the top surface of your tongue. This does two things. It helps reduce the amount of bacteria in your mouth and also can improve or freshen one's breath. Mouthwash should only be used in patients that are able to spit. In addition to general oral health care, it's also important to take good care of your lips. Chronic lip licking habits, for example, may need a petroleum or non-petroleum based emollient or lip care product in order to help maintain a non chap state of their lips. If they chew their lips, may need to have a habit appliance or some other type of dental appliance formed and placed in order to prevent this habit. If there's any questions about lip trauma or other lip care, feel free to contact your dental professional. Just because you have a denture doesn't mean that you don't need to come see the dentist. In fact, we recommend that patients with dentures follow up a minimum of one time a year with their dentist in order to check the fit and function of the denture and also to complete an oral cancer screening. Evaluating the fit of the denture is absolutely critical to ensure that the denture functions well, that you're able to chew well with it, and that it doesn't hurt you or hurt the skin inside your mouth. Denture should be brushed just like teeth. It's not necessary to use a toothpaste to brush a denture. In fact, a mild soap and water is what's recommended to care for a denture. They should be brushed daily and kept moist when they're outside of your mouth. This is to prevent warping or other distortion which could f cause a bad fit. Brushing of the denture should never use should never involve bleach or bleach containing components as this can stain and otherwise change the color of your denture. Finally, it's important to remove dentures daily and not to sleep with them. Sleeping with dentures in the mouth can cause and harbor bacteria and food which can cause problems with your oral health care. Assisting someone else with their dental care. I'm fond of saying that flossing is, doesn't necessarily need to be fancy, and in fact it can be really fast. Just getting the floss in there, going in between the teeth, you want to do as good a job as you possibly can, but just the act of getting in there with the floss means that you're doing a whole lot more in terms of oral health care than a lot of people do every day to take care of themselves or to take care of somebody else. The same thing goes with brushing. Brushing the teeth twice a day or after each meal, if at all possible, will do more to maintain good oral hygiene and then in turn good oral health. It's a relatively simple concept, but it can go a long way in terms of maintaining excellent overall oral health during the course of someone's lifetime. How to brush someone else's teeth, particularly in situations if the person whose teeth you're brushing may have issues with them brushing their teeth and have disruptive or otherwise difficult behaviors. In general, brushing someone's teeth is best from the side or slightly behind the person. This is in contrast to flossing, which is best done actually directly facing the person. The first thing to do is to gently come beside the person. At this point, I always gently rest my hand on their shoulder and explain to the person what we're about to do. Melissa, what we're going to do today is we're going to start to brush your teeth, okay? If the person is slightly apprehensive, I find that this initial contact often establishes a reference point to know that something is about to happen. Visually impaired patients in particular, I found a benefit from this. We then go ahead and retract the cheek with the finger of a hand. This is all going to be done at home. Taking care to keep the finger out from in between the teeth always stay to the side. This is to prevent a bite if the person were to inadvertently close their mouth while you're working. We then go ahead and brush the teeth using the same small circular and sweep motion that we spoke about previously, and working our way from the bottom to the top and all the way around the mouth. Working on this side, we retract or pull the teeth back with the finger 
of the right hand, the same hand that's holding the toothbrush. We can then, using the small circle and sweep motion, clean the teeth on the top and bottom sides of the mouth, taking care to keep our finger once again from out from in between the teeth so that if the person closes their mouth, they won't close it upon our finger. Following completion of this, we can brush the tongue and then exit the mouth with the toothbrush and complete the procedure. In order to provide adequate oral hygiene, sometimes we need to modify or otherwise change typical oral hygiene instruments in order to best achieve their intended purpose. For example, a patient that may have difficulty grasping a traditional toothbrush, we can make a modification by adding a larger grip onto this toothbrush, which can then be used in order to adequately access and clean their oral cavity. Sometimes, other types of props are used. For example, this is a small mouth prop which can be used to assist patients who may have difficulty in opening their mouth. This can be used either sideways or up and down in order to help keep their mouth open while either the patient themselves or another caregiver cleans and brushes the teeth and tongue. Other examples of assistive devices and modifications may be a bicycle handle put onto a toothbrush. This can assist with arthritis or other grip issues. To be able to have a toothbrush which is comfortable and easily held Finally, dental professionals may prescribe a mouth prop or bite block for other individuals to use. These specific types of instruments, however, are only at the prescription of a dental professional. As a dentist, I recognize that sometimes it's difficult to be able to brush your own teeth. What we recommend is to go ahead and work with somebody to get an adaptive device, if necessary, to be able to hold the toothbrush, and also take it bit by bit. Go ahead and start to brush the areas of the mouth that you're comfortable. If you work too far towards the back of your mouth and stop to start to gag, stop. Sometimes breathing in and out through your nose a few times will help assist in calming your gag reflex. Don't put too much toothpaste on the toothbrush. And finally, See if you can work a little bit further or do a little bit more every time you do it. Your body will adapt and change and soon you'll be able to find that you'll be able to brush your teeth better and better over time. If you're unable to use a toothbrush, your dental professional may recommend using a wet washcloth, gauze, or toothettes, which are a foam device that comes on a little stick. These are used as an adjunct to help oral health care needs for patients who otherwise aren't able to tolerate a toothbrush. Dental care for patients with craniofacial abnormalities can be very challenging. What we recommend is a stepwise approach where we start off doing easy things like, for example, brushing the teeth before we move on to more difficult things like scaling or cleaning the teeth in the office. Three significant issues can confront us with patients with craniofacial abnormalities. The first is trismus, or a limited ability to open the jaw. Sometimes, patients with trismus need a mouth prop or bite block to assist them in keeping their mouth open while we go ahead and clean their teeth. Secondly, gag issues can be significant, particularly in patients that have cleft issues. We work slowly, often with suction and patient positioning such that the patient is most comfortable and limits their gag reflex. Sometimes this means that we clean the patient's teeth in an upright rather than a reclined position. Good communication between the parent, patient, and provider is essential in order to keep the patient comfortable and limit gagging issues. Swallowing or dysphagia issues can also present certain challenges to the dental professional. We often use 
liberal use of suction devices, including sometimes toothbrushes that actually have a suction device attached in order to remove saliva from the mouth and help prevent swallowing or gagging issues. Patients that have difficulty swallowing can often describe a feeling that they are being overwhelmed by things in their mouth. Therefore, we, we go very slowly and remove as much saliva and toothpaste material as we can while we're actually working and cleaning the teeth. Gag reflexes. Occasionally, if a patient has a significant gag reflex, it can pose a pretty big problem in order to render dental care. We use two primary means of helping this. The first is distraction. If the patient has a particular TV program, video, music, or anything which they find calming or soothing, use it. We often have parents bring small DVD players or video players into the office, which we'll position near the patient in order to aid them in distracting them as far as what's going on with their mouth. Desensitization is merely a process by which we, every time we see the patient, we push the boundaries a little bit in terms of the care which we're able to provide. Sometimes we'll use a combination of distraction and desensitization over time in order to allow patients to better readily accept oral health care in the office environment. However, these same techniques can be used at home. If you, there's a particular area of the mouth where the person has a strong gag reflex, work slowly up to that point, possibly triggering the gag reflex and then quickly back away. Over time, you may find that this may desensitize the person in that particular area. Finally, don't be afraid to keep the person comfortable. If the person needs to be remain upright in order to brush their teeth, do so. If they feel better leaning backwards, 45 degree angle, or even in some other position that's creative that allows them to be the most comfortable, go ahead and do it. There